So today I'll finish off the recapping of the A1200 and in this picture are all the caps that are left. So rather than just blindly recapping them all, I thought I'd actually go and have a look at what they all do because if we don't know what they do, how can we test them properly? This one here, CA11, is the 5 volt bypass capacitor. So that's just providing gulps of power to all the electronics. The composite video is coming out of this chip down here, this Sony chip, and these two caps are helping out providing power, I think. Uh, there's also an unpopulated section here, which also is related to that, but that's not, I didn't take that off, that's just not populated. Power for the video decoupling, C407, 408, and 409. It's actually a 10 microfarad, 100 microfarad, and 1000 microfarad. They are just providing the little gulps of power that both this digital to analog converter, so this takes in the 8-bit RGB values and converts them to analog signals, and also for the composite video encoder as well. So as long as the composite and the RGB video still work afterwards, then I have replaced those three caps correctly. Then next up is these three. These are all providing power to the RF modulator. Now shoot me if you want, but I'm not going to replace these because this RF modulator, I have absolutely no way of testing this right now, let alone after I've done the recap. I figure that if I don't put these back, that's just three less caps to put back and three less things to leak on the board later on. I'm not interested in the RF modulator. So next up is this mono audio in, and that's being fed into this Sony encoder chip down here. This one I was a bit confused by because I, initially I thought that's audio in from outside the computer, but this is actually mono audio in from the Paula chip. So Paula outputs left and right stereo, and that's mixed into mono over on the other side of the board over here. And it's put through this chip and it's just buffered and then comes straight back out again. And that's being used to send to the RF modulator. So if you think about it, the RGB video port here doesn't even have sound on it because there's separate audio jacks on the Amiga. The composite video output doesn't have audio on it. So this audio is definitely going into the RF modulator. And in fact, when I checked, it goes in on one pin, is buffered, and then goes back out to this C235 cap. So if I'm not gonna replace the three RF caps, then there's no point replacing that one either. That's the plan for today then. I am gonna leave off these four caps, and then afterwards, we need to test that video is working, and we need to test that the composite video works as well. So I might give the composite video a quick test first, just to make sure that works at all, because I've never actually used it on this A1200. And then I'll go ahead with the recapping and that, that'll be a time lapse again because you've seen the way I do these recaps so you can watch that in a, in a previous video if you want to see all the gory details. But essentially, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I am not gonna replace these four. So while I'm doing that, I thought it'd be worth looking at the composite video. I went back and checked the RGB video just to make sure that the RGB is okay. So the RGB is there on the bottom left and the top left is the composite and it looks like the RGB is working fine. So that means that the digital um, RGB that's going into the DAC is then coming out as analog RGB, going into the video encoder, and then what's coming out is looks a bit like the composite video, but then is messed up. So it's either that the composite video encoder chip is messed up or the caps are messed up. So it's likely the caps, I think. Okay, so that's the recap finished. It looks a bit bare around here now, doesn't it? Because that one was never populated and these four I didn't put back. So the only thing left to do now is just to give it a quick test and see if this thing is going to work. So I'm going to plug in the RGB cable because I need to know that that works because some of the caps that are affected by that have been replaced. Well, something's happening. Are we going to get the boot screen? Yeah, we got the boot screen. Cool, so nothing's blown up. Let me plug a floppy drive in. Well, the computer's working. Um, I'm not capturing the sound. I do know the sound works. I haven't replaced any sound caps. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so the sound's on. Nearly deafened myself then. Excellent, that's working. So that was all we really needed to test. We just needed to test that the five volt was working and that video was working basically because all these caps affected the video. And of course these four that I haven't replaced also clearly having no effect here. But there was the problem with the composite video out which was totally screwed up before. So let me swap over to the composite video out and then let's see if that has had any change. So I'm pretty sure that that cap had leaked and it is something to do with the composite that one. So let's give the composite another try now. 
Right, let's give that a go. Oh, would you look at that? So the composite video is now completely fixed. This one did look like it had leaked, so that was definitely screwing the composite video out. So the composite video is fixed. So that's good. So um, there definitely was time to recap this board because it was they were on their way out. Whee, look at that. It totally works. So there we have it. It's been recapped. So I'm quite happy with that. I've uh, successfully done it. I've not screwed anything up. It's taken me quite a few videos, but still. Uh, next job is just to put the Amiga back together. I need to put the keyboard connector back on, clean up the case, uh, stick it all back together. I'll do that in another video. I hope you found that interesting in that I don't know if everyone's going to want to do that, but just not putting all the caps back. I certainly think it's better. I'm never ever going to use the RF modulator. I'll keep the caps and if I ever sell this or somehow I ever manage to have something that can use the RF modulator, then I suppose I could put them back. But um, they'd be very easy to put back on at this point if I wanted them, but they're just no use really. So yeah, I prefer it without them. Less is more. I went to press the space bar then and realised I don't have a keyboard or a keyboard connector. Damn! Excellent, so I'm very happy with that. It seems to be a total success.